Okay, let's keep trying to do this. Uh, when you have children, it takes a lot of effort to even just put out these candid videos. Anyway, I have never done a garden journal and a good friend of mine who has the most beautiful garden and she stores a lot of her produce, um, has found a lot of success in help in using one. So I thought I would try. I didn't wanna just go out and buy one because that's why I never did in the past. I've looked into it. I just didn't find something that fit my needs. And so we homeschool, I already have the ProClick binding system where I can open and add pages, take them out. That way I can really make it fit my need. I have plastic cover, printed this on cardstock and a black cover. And because I didn't really want to invest a lot of money other than printing in this yet, I just found three principles and I put some things in here. We are at the tailor end of this um, gardening year, really. It's fall this week. And so some of this I haven't used yet. So this one I figure I often do a lot of my planning, December, January, so then I can really start planning what I did here. And then I thought I could use this to write what I actually did briefly, like a summary. Um, the free printables also had like a seasonal checklist, you know, summer, autumn, winter. Um, they even had like a monthly one. I probably will use the seasonally over that. Um, I was also going to add tabs on the side to, so that I could quickly flip through things. It had a water tracking. I'm not sure if I'm gonna use this or not yet, but we'll see. It might help to track rain. Um, I'm trying to propagate things by cutting, so I found this really helpful. Um, so that I could see what I have and when I cut it and hopefully help me to know some of my success and failure rates, although this could quickly get filled up with failures because I have not had a lot of success by cutting. Um, also, same thing for seedlings. I was thinking I could use expected bloom and actual bloom for harvests. Um, spraying, I do organic. Um, methods. So mine would be things like when I applied copper and neem um, or beneficial nematodes and it has early, like a early and late. I thought maybe too I could add somewhere whether it worked or not because um, these would be really easy to make on Microsoft Excel. Um, pruning, I have a lot of perennials. Um, different apple trees and stuff so I could add this on here too and I was hoping maybe I could even add when it bloomed I could put like a B for bloom and an H for harvest um, planting so if I start my tomatoes when did I put them in and was it a good year or a bad year um, same thing feeding did I add blood meal um, maybe some rock phosphate some ash from my garden, uh, from my fireplace, whatever. Um, if I needed more details, I have this one. Again, I don't know which one I'll prefer. If I'll like any of them, who knows. Um, this one, for when I do my testing, that way I can have all of it in one place to know how things have changed. I changed what they had for pests and diseases. And um, I wrote the date. I had, for example, I had late blight in, a, in our raised garden beds. It was the first row in the third bed, and it was it was fatal. So it was only on one of my tomato varieties. They're all starting to get a little bit, um, but one, it was so much worse than all the others, and it was all of that variety. So I thought that would be an interesting thing to note. And then we also had some different bugs, and as I kind of started drawing some, I thought, why don't I just, kind of type up a page on it or copy and paste. And then I added some of the things quickly that really work against it. And then maybe some things so that I can identify what their eggs look like because I didn't think about that. Um, and some of our other pests and what their damage looks like. I also was thinking I could add a page for neem oil and I can write, does it kill things or did it just slow down the, the, the problems? Or the pyrethrin, you know, it has to be on contact. So what if I can't see the bugs? Um, 
and just things like that so I can write how to use it, what I've used it for, or what it's supposedly effective for, and whether I found that to be true or not. Um, I just have another page for garden pests and diseases. This one I'm interested in. Um, I can do a little write-up on the plants that I've got. So for example, that German Johnson tomatoes, it was the one that was completely taken over by blight, but when did it bloom and when did I get my harvests? Maybe it's worth it. Um, I just need to know that it's not gonna be the longest lived plant. For example, the Black Beauty tomatoes have been the tastiest and they bloomed early and they're still setting fruit, but it has been the slowest ripening. I've gotten the fewest um, harvests from it compared to all the others but it seems to be doing really well with the blight so far. So, you know, it'll help me decide um, which one is better. Here's just a more compact view. And then I didn't like how I how hole punched it, so I did it on the other side. Not perfect, but who cares? It's just me. Here we go. And this one I thought would be good for my perennials, for example. I just started like my Reuben apple tree. I can add a picture. When does it bloom? Um, especially with things that you need something to cross pollinate with, that might be really handy. When did I actually harvest it? Like for example, my frost peaches, um, they're still really young and I'm not sure if I harvested them at the right time. And so I can write, you know, down here, this is when I harvested it and the fruit didn't taste very good or that it was too early or that it was perfect timing, you know, um, so. Uh, other thing I have in the back is I wanted some way to sort of track my harvests. Now I might not say all the time that I got this many pounds because a lot of times when I harvest kale, for example, I harvest so much and it's every day or every other day, I'm not going to weigh it, you know, but I can just do something like um, for, the, for the big hitters like tomatoes and how much did I get at the end and how much does it cost for beefsteak tomatoes and did it, is it, how much money would it have costed so or saved you know for example the delicata squash I haven't finished harvest harvesting all my winter squash yet but um, I believe I harvested like at least 30 pounds and you know so I can write that all in there and that leads me to this part of why um, I grow food is to can it and to preserve it so um, Last year, I didn't get enough tomatoes to do any tomato sauce. It's a really bad tomato year for me. Um, but this year, you can see it started out slow. I made two pints, <laughs> but I had to use what I had. And then the other day, I made 10 pints, but one exploded, so I got nine. And this will help me to know, am I canning enough? Um, like I ran out. So um, that'll help me plan for the future. Also, um, butternut squash last year, I grew a ton of butternut squash and I still have one left. And I mean, it's looking a little sad, but it'll help me to know which varieties stored really well, or maybe I stored them improperly or all of this kind of stuff because, you know, when you're just going off your memory, you're bound to make some mistakes. So anyway, this is what I have in here. If you garden journal, I would love to hear tips or to see photos. Um, and hear ideas on how to do this better and what your thoughts are. And thank you to my good friend Tara for encouraging me to start doing this. And let's just hope this propels me to be an even um, better gardener. Thanks for watching. Bye.